Ready? Okay, great. Okay, thank you. Uh, welcome, everybody. Good afternoon to Swansea's Public Service Board. Um, we will go first of all to apologies for absence. Uh, thank you, Chair. Apologies from uh, Roger Thomas, Emma Woolett, uh, Karen Stapleton, and Martin Evans. Okay, thank you, Jeremy. Uh, and so on then to item two, which is disclosures of personal and prejudicial interest. I can't see anyone indicating. No. OK, thank you. So we move on then to the minutes of the previous Public Service Board. I uh, haven't heard anybody say that they're not accurate, but um, if I can just uh, see a show of hands that you're happy that they're an accurate record. OK. And so on then to public question time. Have we received any questions from the public? Uh, no questions, Chair. OK, thank you, Jeremy. And so item five, um, it gives me great pleasure to welcome the Future Generations Commissioner, Derek Walker, to the meeting. Um, Derek, would you like to say a few words? Hi, Andrea, nice to see you again. And thank you for inviting me along today. Um, this is my first PSB meeting um, since I've started the job. I've met a few PSB chairs but I haven't attended a meeting before, either in an either, another capacity either. So thank you very much for making space for me today and um, good to meet meet you all. Um, Andrea, I didn't have a copy of the agenda, so I'm not sure how much time we've got for this item and how you want to play it. Is it, um, do you want me to say a few words about uh, my priorities and where I've got to? And would we have time then for conversation and discussion? It would be good to hear from members if we've got that time. Yes, I'm more than happy. Um, you are a dedicated item on our agenda this afternoon. So please feel free to you know, speak about your role and then we can open it up for questions. Over to you, Derek. Oh, great. OK, sorry, I didn't get the, the agenda. Well, any, anyway, so thank you very much again. Um, so I've been in post um, for two months now and my background just so you know, is in the third sector most recently. So I was chief executive of Compass, the development agency that used to be called the Wales Cooperative Centre. And we have had an office in Swansea and have many staff in the Swansea area. And so um, I took up office here on the 1st of March, taking over from Sophie Howe. So um, very much getting my feet under the table and um, thinking about how I approach the role. Um, so. First of all, I want to make sure that we have time for conversation because I'm really in that sort of listening mode and wanting to have conversations about how you see the Future Generations Act, the role of the PSB and my role as commissioner and what your thoughts are on, um, you know, what's important and what's, what I should focus on. Um, but to give you my two penneth worth to start with, <laughs> and then you can tell me whether I've got that right or not. Um, I very much came into the role um, with the uh, pitch that um, that the now is the time to really knuckle down and look at implementation. So we have a great policy here in Wales and we have had great practice and lots of green shoots um, taking place right across Wales. But um, there's an, now a job for all of us to focus on implementing the Act so that people of Wales see the outcomes as a result of the legislation, not just can be proud of the, the positive le legislation. So I'm working out how I take on that role. I've been doing a number of these meetings um, across the last two, um, four, uh, eight weeks with public bodies, not with PSBs, as I've said, but um, with public bodies and some common themes have been coming out. Um, but certainly one of those from public bodies directly has been um, a, a call from me to focus on the how and to supporting implementation. So very much, um, I can see public bodies very aligned to the act. Everyone largely believes in what we're trying to do here in Wales with the legislation, but perhaps more support in terms of making that happen and making a difference. So that's certainly my intention. We have a public bodies team, uh, which Jenny is part of, and Jenny is the lead for Swansea and Swansea PSB. 
and um, through that role we offer direct advice for um, public bodies but we also you know provide feedback and Jenny has a monitoring role to assess um, the the performance of um, public bodies right across Wales so um, we have that team within the office and I think that's very much uh, been welcomed. There is of course a how we do that and how we do that effectively because you know we are not all the experts within our team and I think you know very much about you know we the thoughts I'm having is, you know, we play more of a role in bringing together those people who've done things and those people who want to do things so that you can, you know, make those connections rather than coming through us. And also a role for us in supporting the um, strengthening of expertise around sustainable development within public bodies. So the organisations, you know, develop their own expertise and connect it to each other rather than needing to come through ourselves as an as an office so that is certainly something that we're looking at and um, deciding on how we um, strengthen um, another area uh, and forgive forgive me Andrea and Ness because you've both heard this um, bit but we also have a, a role in sort of policy and influencing policy and I think probably that's might be what we're most known for as an office in terms of influencing transport policy or healthcare policy um, pushing for a UBI pilot, all those sorts of things that have been very influential and um, supported moving the dial in certain areas. I want to continue that work and there have been some common themes about where we might focus our efforts. Um, I think those themes are perhaps not going to be a surprise to you and certainly when we met with Swansea Council, Andrea and Ness and colleagues were generally supportive, I think, of the themes that had come through. Uh, and they were things like the climate and nature emergency, um, food policy, and health, long-term health issues. Um, but there are many and other issues as well. Um, I, I do intend to focus um, on fewer issues and in more depth and over the longer term, rather than try to cover lots of ground, um, but not um, in too much detail because I think the danger in this role is that potentially you can get pulled in lots of different directions and be involved in lots of different areas, um, but um, actually focusing down may achieve more impact. So I'd be very interested in your, you know, your feedback on whether those themes are useful and you can see a role for us. We don't want to get involved in areas where, you know, there is already people with lots of energy. We want to get involved in areas that are important, but also where we can add value and where we can bring impact. So when we look at those areas, it won't just be about policy, but it will be about systems and other things that we can look at and bring attention to and perhaps bang heads together or facilitate and convene sessions where we can really understand how, what the blockages are and how we can, how we can shift the dial in those areas. So, you know, great to have your feedback on that. Um, there are lots of other areas that the team are involved in and we run something called the Future Generations Leadership Academy which I think a number of you have been involved in sponsoring people through that program. It's a fantastic program and we're just about to run another cohort and be really keen for public bodies uh, around this table to contact us if they're keen to sponsor somebody. Um, these young people are given a great understanding of the public sector and of our legislation on the Wellbeing of Future Generations Act of course in particular and then supported to get on in their careers particularly in sort of leadership positions in the Welsh public sector and we're delighted that one of our one of our cohort members from last year I think or maybe the year before has been appointed to the Board of Museums Wales which has been fantastic so young group of talented young people from diverse backgrounds who are supported to get on um, and we also do a, a programme of international work, um, sharing what we do in Wales, but also bringing back to Wales good practice that we can look at and implement. So recognising that one of the goals is the globally responsible Wales goal. And um, that remains, you know, really important to me and and um, something that we will you know, continue to do. Um, we had a great meeting, I thought. Thank you, Ness and Andrea. I think last week or maybe the week before. I'm, I'm do last week, yeah. And um, and some some really good stuff came from that. 
Um, one of the things I think that came through, and I think perhaps it was you, Andrea, was around the PSB and the collaborative structures that exist in Wales, the collection of collaborative structures. Is that the group term for a collaborative structure, a collection of co collaborative structures, perhaps, um, that sometimes can get in the way of collaboration rather than help? And so because the PSBs have been set up or through the Act, I have a role in sort of supporting their function and supporting their performance and um, um, helping get things out of the way of these um, structures, these the PSBs doing what they want to do. So uh, interested in your thoughts on that too um, and any role you might think um, my office and my team might have in, in thinking about that. I think, um, not to prejudge the conversation, but um, the conversation I had with Swansea Council were supportive of the themes that we talked about and just saw some alignment there. But were you know we had some specific conversations about the types of things that we might be able to do in those spaces that would be helpful to you as organisations to um, to to take things forward. And I think one of those things that came up was the idea that you know all PSBs and all public bodies are, uh, you know are looking at climate change and net zero and actually could these be more aligned to help everyone um so you know common structures common baselines common frameworks for assessing progress might be something where you know we could get involved in in a supportive way of giving some direction we can't um, tell you what you should be doing but they might be frameworks that are helpful and if if uh, enough of us take the same framework it takes it you know gives momentum and um, allows us to sort of assess our progress against others as well and, and learn from each other too so um, I think that's probably all I wanted to say at the outset to give you um, that background to the discussion I will in publish my plans in October um, so I'll be very clear from then, you know, what we're going to focus on, and why you, you might be surprised that some of the things that you should, you would expect to see are on there, um, aren't on there. And we will try to justify why we've chosen what we've chosen to do. But it's very much done on the basis of where we can add some value. So not just issues that are important, but where can the Office of the Future Generations Commissioner get involved more effectively to affect change? So. Jochima, thank you, Andrea, and I um, look forward to the discussion. Thank you, Derek, um, and really do welcome uh, the support from your office going forward. I'll open it up for questions, comments or observations. Uh, who wants to go first? Nobody? <laughs> I, I take that as a agreement with everything you've said, Derek. Um, Keith? Yeah, I'll jump in, Andrea. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks very much, Derek. I'm particularly pleased to 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 hear about your approach that you you do to yourself as uh, providing challenge to the public sector, which I think is absolutely right and and critical to uh, us raising our game, but but doing that in a supportive way. But also, uh, you outlined that you do see you have a role in in advocacy. Um, um, which which is 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 clear, um, and also I really welcome the the idea that you you do see yourself as facilitating and brokering um, networks across the public sector and beyond to to uh, with a f really strong emphasis on de delivery, um, because because as you say the policy environment has been well established in Wales for a long time. What's been lacking is, you know, change, real, real change in the lives of, of the people of Wales. So uh, that's the challenge to us all, I guess. Um, you did say that you wanted to focus on long term health impact. Um, and I guess coming from from the health sector, as I do and from a public health standpoint, I, I, I wonder why you've why you've chosen that, because, um, you know, health Health is a product of the environment in which people live, learn, work and play. So by focusing on health, there is a risk that we actually somehow divert attention away from the causes of the causes, as as Michael Marmot uh, causes, uh, calls them. Uh, and, and we focus on individuals and health 
care services rather than thinking, well, why do we have such a terrible health status in the Welsh population uh, and how do we shift that into into the future? So I, I just wondered what you're thinking about that was and where do you see that agenda going? Shall I come back straight away on that one? Yeah. Yes, um, yeah, no, I think that would be my approach. I didn't mean to give the impression otherwise. It would be looking at the wider determinants of health and um, health prevention um, efforts. Um, this is something that I'm really grappling with about, you know, where you know, there are lots of players in this area, lots of people with a lot more expertise than I do, certainly. And, um, you know, where is the additional um, value that we can bring. And I was actually speaking to, I guess, Chris's colleague, Chief Medical Officer Frank Atherton this morning, and um, I asked him this question. And one of the um, things that he suggested, I mean, it just caught him on the off guard, but in terms of, you know, spotlighting or highlighting, you know, areas for action or, 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 or concern, really. So, you know, we could, one of the opportunities of the role I think is that the way that you can bring attention to things and and um, bring a spotlight to things and convene people around a particular issue so I do want to underline it would be in that kind of space um, it, you know um, the Gwent uh, PSB has um, decided it wants to be a Marmot region and so that would be another reason for us to be supportive because the PSB has chosen it as their focus um, but we do want to you know, we'll do some detailed work to drill down on if we are going to focus on this, what would be our approach and what would we do and what wouldn't we do? So more work's needed on that. But thanks um, for the question, Keith. Thank you, Derek. Chris? Yeah, um, thank you, Andrea. I mean, I've only been an invited participant for a few months on the Swansea PSB, but um, I was just interested in your initial comments about delivering outcomes and I wonder to what extent that requires PSBs to be behaving and operating similarly because it does seem fairly clear from discussions internal to Welsh government, Welsh government and also at the PSB that um, there's an observation that different PSBs have different modus operandi and different areas of emphasis and uh, perhaps are achieving different things so to what extent do you think there need to be acting more consistently? Um, the, yeah, I, I do think there's a case for this. <laughs> I mean, who, far from me to, to sort of dictate, you know, I, I don't have that sort of power. Um, and you as PSB set these on the basis of your assessments. Um, but I do feel, I guess, in the example that I've given around climate change and race, you know, going to net zero, um, as one example, that there are some very similar objectives and approaches across PSBs and across public bodies, actually, which, actually, you know, why couldn't they be the same? And would it be helpful if they were? So it might not always be helpful because you need to be appropriate to the local circumstances and they are different. But um, in something like net zero, I feel like, you know, we could present potentially, you know, draft objectives a common framework that you could, as PSBs and others, adopt. You wouldn't have to, but by doing so, we would be able to um, bring others and direct our own resources more effectively to given common support, and we would be able to benchmark and so forth. So I think, to a limited extent, I I do feel that that might have some value. Um, but I'm I guess I'm at quite early stage in thinking about how that might be done and what that might be. Done what might result from that. Um, yeah, and I guess this takes me on to another subject which might provoke some um, further thoughts is, you know, in terms of structures more generally and PSBs more, more generally, there's quite a mixed picture. In, you know, Gwent PSB is five local authorities, you're one. In North Wales, there are two local authority areas coming together with all the collective partners. And then we've got now the CJCs, um, that are coming into place and we've got other collaborative arrangements like the community safety partnerships and other things which um, police colleagues have said oh I wish they all worked in the same way so we knew who they reported to and into because it would make life much easier for us so 
you know, I yeah, it's it's clear. You know, my my pre my predecessor has made comments on this, which I agree with. In that, you know, there's there's a there's a job to do to tidy some of this stuff up. Um, but some of it is in the gift of you know local authorities in particular to do some of this because they they have the ability to structure these things on the on the footprint that they want to. Other things like the RPBs uh, less so. Um, so you know it's not you know some of it's at the door of Welsh government and some of the, it's at the door of others. But um, you know perhaps our role is to 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 sort of share information about. I don't know how often PSBs get together or PSB chairs get together, actually. Um, uh, I don't know if Andrea might be able to answer that. But actually learning from how PSBs work and how they interact with other PS, uh, collaborative structures and if that's effective or not might be helpful to everyone to, to understand how they might do things in their area. Thank you for the question, Chris. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, just to come in on that, um, I can't recall uh, a meeting where all PSB chairs across Wales meet. Um, that could be something that could be really useful and interesting. Um, so, and, and perhaps beneficial. But I, I, I will recall when we met with yourself and Jenny, you know, the benefit of your office sharing. The good practice because you've got a bird's eye view of all the public service boards and how they operate and what's working really well and i think we could benefit significantly from that overview of what's happening elsewhere in wales um because you know there's always room for improvement and there's no sense in reinventing the wheel as it were so but yeah to my recollection the only time i've met online other psb chairs is when the ministers called a meeting with PSB chairs, so I'm not aware of any other formal meeting process, so that could be useful. Uh, thank you for that. So I've got Craig. Yeah, thanks, and, and I think you just stole my thunder a little bit there, Andrew. All, all great minds think alike, because um, there's, there's an element of appreciative inquiry here, isn't it? So what's going really well, what's working really well, and then spreading that word across uh, some of the PSB areas. and. We see that um, currently within um, public sector, within Welsh government, in terms of the All Wales Continuous Improvement Forum, you know, it's a good practice exchange. Um, the LRF chairs, um, I think Matt Travis is the chair of chairs. So there is co other collaborative structures where that kind of getting together and melding of minds and, and sharing of good practice goes on. And perhaps that's something, Derek, that could be considered from a, from a PSB perspective of, you know, that appreciative inquiry, glass half full approach, what's working really well and how uh, can your uh, department, your your office, your role share that across and, and keep us regularly updated? Thank you, Andrea. Thank you, Craig. Um, Derek, did you want to come in well, on that? Well, just very briefly, yeah, I will note that down, Craig, because I, I have a bit of experience, but not much of appreciative inquiry approaches. But um, I think, uh, you know, I get the, the gist of um, what you're saying and how we might um bring some i guess collective learning together to everyone's benefit so thank you craig thank you helen have we lost helen you're on mute helen i'm sorry after all this time still do it occasionally <laughs> thank you uh, apologies for that uh, yeah obviously representing natural resources wales then we're you know thrilled to hear that uh, some of the key themes of your focus is climate and nature, food policy, long-term health. They very much align well with our recently published corporate plan uh, that will uh, take us to 2030, our vision for which is nature and people thriving together. So those three themes very much fit in with, with uh, what NRW are keen to be driving forward, both in our own work and definitely through the PSB as well. And just to sort of comment that, as I'm sure you're aware anyway, with the, the work uh, that we, we, we've we done over the years with the Future Generations Office, is that we're the statutory member that does sit on all PSBs as well. So we do have that overview of how it works elsewhere. And, you know, internally, uh, we do have national discussions regularly. We have uh, fortnightly meetings on, on our PSB work. So again, that's a really great forum where we can have an exchange of sort of good practice or common issues. And that's something that we're looking into now as an organisation is now that we've reached the milestone of the uh, sign off the uh, uh, wellbeing plans is what were the common 
issues that arose both in the process of our work and also in terms of how we now support the PSBs across Wales nationally. And of course, that would will feed into Swansea, no doubt. So just a couple of comments there. And I think, you know, one of the things that we did uh, push fairly hard on uh, or encourage PSPs to consider in their plans and making commitment to is the climate change risk assessment. So again, that might be a commonality there that links in with your sort of common baselines. Oh, sorry. Uh, so the, the work that we do there. So I think I think there's a lot to be shared across PSBs in that line of work. I know Pembrokeshire are, I think, uh, fairly well progressed in their CCRA, at least having done the sort of first phase um, but already have this action plan but now it's how do we resource this so I think we're going to each PSB that undertakes that piece of work however they go about it are probably going to encounter similar issues resourcing in particular and where do we go from here how do we innovate how do we work together how do we share best practice so I think there's a lot of opportunity and really excited to uh, continue our work with you both nationally and through Swansea PSB thank you thank you Helen yeah and I, I know um we work very closely together as organisations and, I, you know, we need to continue to do that, don't we, for the sake of everyone else so that people are receiving common messages and we're saying um, common things so that um, the picture isn't even more confusing. But um, thank you for that. Really helpful. OK, thank you. I can't see anyone else indicating. So just remains to thank you very much um, for attending here today. It's really appreciated. Uh, and I do feel that you and Jenny will probably be very interested in the rest of the agenda. So you're very welcome to stay for the whole meeting. Um, so I'll move on then to our next item, which is uh, our, it, it's, it's very timely that you're here today, Derek and Jenny, because uh, item six is our local wellbeing plan for final approval today. Uh, and we will, I promise you, unless it's already been done, we will share our full agenda with you. Uh, and which will include the, the local wellbeing plan. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Ness uh, to take us through this item. Over to you, Ness. Uh, th thank you, Andrea. So um, I don't propose to go through the plan again as we have been through it um, as, a, as a PSB a number of times over the last couple of months, but just to say that since we as a PSB approved the plan in February informally, it has now been through all our statutory partner um, governance arrangements. Um, just need to confirm with Keith um, that uh, it went to the Health Board's board on the 30th of March, um, but just to confirm that the board did approve it. Yes, I'm getting a thumbs up. So um, so it's really presented here as a, a formality to just approve the, the, the report in final form um, and to note that it will be um, published, um, I think, um, uh, in the chat with the translation uh, at the end of this month or the very beginning of next. We have also done an easy read version and also a video um, to make it more accessible or perhaps a little bit more lively than the written document. Um, and that will be um, available shortly after that publication date of, of uh, the beginning of May. So with that, just to recommend to the board that we do sign off the, the um, uh, wellbeing plan for 23-28. Thank you. OK, thank you, Ness. Um, are we all happy to formally approve the plan? I could see a lot of assent uh, nods. Uh, thank you very much for that. And can I just uh, place on record my thanks to Ness uh, and the team for pulling this together, but also to our partners um, for the formal approval uh, and your input into the plan. It's after all, it's our plan. Um, so it's very, very gra grateful to all of you for being involved. Um, so I'll move on then, um, which links nicely and segues nicely into item seven, which is Swansea Public Service Board's Wellbeing Plan 2023-24 Action Plan. So back to you, Ness. Thank you, Andrea. So um, in terms of uh, this report that you have in front of you, the covering report it recognises that we have now uh, approved the wellbeing plan um, and uh, we have also identified strategic leads for each of the eight steps um, that are identified within the plan. And um, as we agreed as a PSB, we've started to work up what the detailed actions for 
um, uh, for those steps should be focusing on the first year of 23-24. So since the start of this year, uh, calendar year, we have um, had a formal meeting, but we've also had um, a couple of informal face-to-face -face meetings and that, that sort of reflected a discussion that we had as a PSB about really wanting to make sure that we are building the relationships and recognizing that perhaps through the pandemic and the move to uh, remote working, um, and we wanted to, to re-engage face-to-face uh, as colleagues. And so we've done that. We've had two meetings uh, since the, the start of the year. So at the first meeting, uh, informal meeting on the 16th of January, we discussed how we should approach the development of the action plans um, that would sit underneath the steps in the wellbeing plan. And you can see um, in the uh, meeting, uh, in, in the covering paper, the uh, a number of things that we agreed um, to uh, ensure were included as we uh, went through that development process. So in particular, they're recognising that we needed to improve our own performance management arrangements. Um, and that also reflected a number of discussions that we've had with the scrutiny committee uh, within the council about ensuring that we can demonstrate the added value of the PSB and the work that we are progressing together through this wellbeing plan. Uh, we also recognise the resource challenges that are facing all organisations, all, all, all partners, um, and so the importance of us ensuring that our actions um, are adding value but are making most of our uh, sort of baseline resources within individual organisations. Uh, so the third thing was that we should optimise our leadership role and understand that it is as much as anything, it's not just about the actions that we agree to take, but also building those relationships, breaking down the barriers and, and continuing to work on issues that may arise during um, the next five years that might not specifically be part of the objectives, but just recognises the excellent work that we can do together as partners. Um, and then to that uh, we recognise that, I guess, lessons learned from previous plans, that we may achieve more by focusing on fewer bigger ticket items and doing those well and setting ourselves some really clear performance arrangements for those so that we can make sure that we're measuring, managing and able to report against those. And then we finally, we, we discussed sort of, um, how we'd go about doing that. And we uh, identified that, uh, identifying two actions under each step, one which focused potentially on a specific issue that was related to uh, evidence from the wellbeing assessment, and the second that was uh, a more preventative longer term action, which would either help um, to ensure that that first action uh, could be sustained or that another issue, we could, we could avoid another issue occurring in the future. So those were the sort of parameters that were set. Uh, table, uh, the table in paragraph 2.2 .2 of the report shows uh, the strategic leads that were or have been identified for each of the steps there. Um, and just noting there that um, our, our colleague Martin Evans from NRW is there as the interim uh, lead uh, for the net zero step, recognising that Martin um, lucky him uh, gets to retire at the end of May. So that is a strategic, uh, an interim strategic lead um, until a permanent lead is identified um, potentially uh, from the the, the um, climate signatories group uh, that I think will potentially be the lead for delivering um, that step. So the second informal meeting was held on the 5th of April, and that was an opportunity for uh, colleagues who were able to attend face to face to have an initial look at the emerging action plans. And so we were able to have a discussion around each of them, identify the connections um, and uh, and just sort of sense check that uh, they made sense and hung together um, as a collective group. So. Uh, the next stage of the report in section three sets out the proposed next steps um, and it uh, reflects the uh, or, or refers to Appendix A, which is the emerging draft action plans. Um, and it uh, also then uh, is, is proposing that uh, we have we've done this sort of first, uh, if you like, iteration of the action plans uh, through co-production with uh, prim primarily the statutory members of the PSB, but now 
um, subject to comments from colleagues at the meeting today. We propose that the strategic leads now engage with the, the wider PS membership, PBSB membership. So that's all invited participants and partnership forum members to continue to work and hopefully finalise those actions. Um, and that importantly, the strategic lead officers meet so that we can have a discussion to ensure that we are make, maximising the synergies between um, between the steps, recognising that they um, contribute to uh, a number of the, the um, wellbeing objectives that are outlined in as priorities in the plan. So uh, this is a 23-24 action plan and therefore we are proposing that we try and, and get that finalised by the end of May to give us uh, time to get on and actually deliver something um, substantive during the course of the year. And the final point there is that once uh, we have an agreed action plan, we're proposing that we make it a standing item on the PSB agenda, that we have a progress report against each of those steps so that we can, can monitor as a group our progress um, throughout the year. And then that we bring to the board um, by the end of this calendar year, a proposed action plan to progress those steps during 2024-25. So with that, Chair, I'll take you to the recommendations, which is for PSB uh, partners to comment on um, Appendix A and to agree that the strategic leads now engage with the wider membership to finalise the plans and that finally they become a standing item on our future agendas. Thank you. Thank you, Ness. Um, so I'll open it up first for comments from any of the partners. Does anyone wish to comment on this item? Helen? Unmute. Um, yeah, thank you. I've got to say, as somebody who's been involved at officer, officer level and so in the uh, planning group and the uh, assessment group before it then it feels like it does feel like a pretty major milestone for uh, the work that we've put in uh, to, to reach this point so uh, very happy to see it um, and I, I guess I've just got a couple of queries around uh, as you say Ness Lucky Martin um, popping off uh, at the end of May to enjoy his free time um, so I wonder what thoughts are around uh, strategic lead on step three for climate and nature and I also also notice in the draft plan that the operational lead is um, also uh, TBC by the looks of it. So I'm not sure what the thinking is there. Um, and just to note that uh, I think there's there's been some conversations around it. And so if it's not NRW, it would leave us as one of the four statutory members not being a strategic lead of, of any of the steps or um, objective delivery group. So some of this work will come my way or, or, or maybe it won't. But so it, no, just clarity around what the thinking is there. Um, I'm not saying that it should absolutely be NRW. I'm, I'm um, you know, as with other PSBs, it's not necessarily the most obvious organisation who leads on their own objective. And I think there's good things that can come from that. So it's just something that I noted when I was looking through the uh, agenda pack. Perhaps, um, Ness, if I, shall I come in yes. on this first? Yeah. Okay. So um, I think the thinking around it, Helen, is that um, when we had the informal PSB, everyone was much of the same mind that we wanted a wider group uh, sitting below this step and that recognising that there's already um, a, a climate and nature signatories charter group so rather than reinvent the wheel, it made sense that the Climate Charter Signatories Group is part of this step. Um, the problem we've got currently is the chair of that group is uh, Jane Richmond from the council, okay. but she's very much holding that position until somebody else takes that on. So she's not in intending on staying in that position. She's ready to pass that over to somebody who's interested. But I think if we could align the chair of that group and if we could then ask that group to, to vote who they want to be the project lead, then that would make sense. So the project lead, um, to my mind, would come from that group, okay. um, uh, voted by the members of that group. And just um, for the benefit of those who may or may not know, I mean, I'm sure the partners know on this call that all PSB partners are signatories of that group. So by default, there will be a member from each partner on that group, which makes sense. I don't know, Ness, if you wanted to add anything to that. 
no I, I you know that that absolutely reflects the <clears throat> the kind of discussion that we've had um both i think with martin and um and with colleagues internally about just trying to make sure that as far as possible we are working with existing groups and that we're trying to make the most of you know we don't want to have duplicate groups so therefore that does seem to make sense and i think yeah, you sure. know in terms of the operational lead it it feels positive to kind of say to that group well over to you who do you think should be that operational lead and it may be that you know it's more than one person but um, yeah that, that um, I think that'd be a good idea is, is it something that that operational lead obviously would need to already would need to uh, fully resource that role I suppose so um, I, I I don't know all of the, the the members of the the charter. I'm not the NRW rep on that. So I guess and something that has come up in in discussion around that is being able to review that membership and you know identify whether or not there are others that we need to try to target to bring into that. Particularly now with this wider role to be the objective delivery group leads. Um, yeah. So uh, sorry, the objective delivery group rather than just the climate yeah. signatures group. Yeah. So, you know, we're really keen, obviously, to support it. We feel that we've got a strategic and key role to play in this, obviously. Um, so, so, yeah, very much welcome uh, conversation around that and yeah, positively to support it going forward. Great. Thank you, Helen. That's appreciated. And I think the other thing um, just to note, um, which which I was aware of, was that that group, um, the signatories group, we're also intending a mitigation and adaptation plan. So there was a fear that there might be a bit of duplication. So that's another reason why it makes sense to have that group as the same group um, to avoid any, any duplication or to, to avoid any gaps uh, and things sure. falling through the cracks. So thank yeah, you for that. Yeah, totally understand that. Thank you. Thanks, Helen. Um, OK, any other further comments on this item? No, um, so I just again thank Ness and all of you um, for your input into this and now the hard work begins. So it's going to be um, a busy year, but I really do feel strongly and I know I've mentioned this in other meetings that this um, is a far more targeted strategy and far more measurable. Um, and so therefore I look forward to attending, you know, the future scrutiny meetings where they say, what 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 are the measures? What what's the additionality? What what has the PSB added that I can actually go to that committee and um, say yes? You know we do have targets, we do have measurable outcomes. So my real appreciation to Ness and to the team for pulling that together. Um, so that takes us on then to item eight, which is the frequency of meetings and the terms of reference. This is a verbal report. Uh, back to you, Ness. Uh, thank, thank you, Andrea. Yes, yeah, so this is to inform the group that uh, we're proposing to move from bi-monthly formal meetings to quarterly meetings, um, but having the informal face-to-face -face meetings in between in, in between those quarterly meetings as a means of ensuring we are maintaining and building those uh, relationships. Um, so probably means subject to comments from colleagues that we need to review the terms of reference um, and um, it may be that we want to uh, look at those terms of reference perhaps in one of our informal meetings uh, and then bring that back uh, to the next formal meeting for agreement. Um, so um, it may be that that also it gives us an opportunity to to have a have a discussion about ways of working, et cetera, too. So, um, you know, open to comments, but that's the the suggestion is we move to quarterly formal meetings, as I say, with informal meetings in between. Thank you, Ness. Um, I, I know that many of us have had this discussion and are supportive of that approach, but just to do, do it formally. So is everybody happy that we um, coordinate informal meetings and then move to quarterly formal meetings. Everybody OK with that? Great, thank you very much. And I don't know whether it's appropriate, Ness, to mention now that um, we do have sometimes uh, a little bit of confusion with having joint committee in the title of this committee. And so I would propose that we just change it very simply to Swansea Public Service Board Committee 
and remove the word joint because we also meet jointly with Neetha Batarbat regularly. And so that joint in the title of this committee does sometimes cause a little bit of confusion. So if everybody's happy with that, we'll just simplify the title. OK, thank you. Um, OK, great. So that will take us on then to item nine, the partnership forum. And really, it's over to you as partners. Is, is there anything that you wish to update the committee on particularly today? Now, Keith, did you want to mention anything about the population health strategy? Yeah, I was, I was just um, slow and put my hand up. So thanks very much for that leading uh, chair. Yep. So in addition to approving the PSB wellbeing plans at the Swansea Bay University Health Board meeting on 30th of March, the board also approved a population health strategy uh, for the health board. So I think that's the first time that the health board has had a population health strategy. Um, and it why why is that important? Because it, it it's it what 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 difference does that make to the work of the health board? Um, I, I think it does two things. First of all, it 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 sets out a, a clear series of publicly and formally a clear series of commitments by the health board to target uh, you know uh, the the marmot principles, which is the basis of of the population health strategy. So in line, as we've heard from, from the Future Generations Commission, in line with approaches happening elsewhere in Wales and in line with approaches being adopt, adopted by PSBs, I think as well, the Marmot principles are entirely compatible with the Wellbeing of Future Generations Act approach. Um, so it's, um, I think it's really helpful in that regard, a public commitment to working in that way um, and and then a practical expression of what that might mean. So there's four four pillars which the health board have identified to to support the population health strategy. One is around how we deliver our clinical offer, so the services that we offer to our population. How do we begin to think about what population health benefits arise from those? You might think, well, of course they arise. Population health benefit arises from clinical services. That's the whole point of them. But it's it's thinking about more about how we can deliver healthcare in a way which maximizes that population health gain. So thinking about earlier disease detection and earlier intervention and more uh, investment in preventative approaches uh, in particular. So so purposefully design redesigning our, our services to to be more upstream and, and more focused on generating and supporting health rather than simply on the treatment of disease. The second pillar is around um, how we look after our workforce. So as one of the major employers in the region, we've got nearly 15,000 employees that we directly contract with and a number of others who, who we have relationships with. So how can we use our uh, that, that very close relationship employer employee to provide our employees with a, a working environment which uh, supports and helps them to have good health and to generate health supporting habits and approaches. Uh, and that's across a whole range of things, including you know how much we pay them, um, uh, what they do with that money in terms of you know supporting them to 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 spend that wisely, how they get to and from work, encouraging them to be more active physically, how we look, look after them and keep them safe, both physically and mentally in the workplace. So so that kind of uh, element. the The third pillar is about our behavior as a corporate entity. So that's thinking about us as a, an anchor institution, as a major employer, but also a major spender in Swansea and Swansea Bay. We've got a budget of getting on for 1.3 billion every year. So some of that goes straight into the community, so supporting community services uh, and direct delivery. How can we maximize our spend in the local community and ensure that that contributes through circular economy uh, approaches and, and other approaches, the economic vitality in, in Swansea and Swansea Bay. And the fourth uh, pillar, very relevant to the current discussion, is around how we behave in the partnership space. So it's getting away from from our approach to partnerships being, oh, we're the health board, we'd like you to come and help do this. To we're the health board, we're trying to achieve this. This aligns with what you're trying to achieve. How do together we work together to deliver what we can't deliver independently? So getting into a, a true partnership men, mindset uh, and approach and and being more active in the partnership space. So, so it's uh, just been approved. We're at the stage where we're now beginning as an organisation to you know it's it's that morning after 
period where we wake up thinking, well, what did we do yesterday? Oh, yes, we approved the strategy. So what does that mean for us? We're starting to work through that. So that's going to be percolating through the conversations and interactions that we have internally and also externally. But I think it's quite exciting and it does mark, I see, a watershed in the behaviour of the health board from what we were before, which was sometimes a very internally healthcare focused organisation to one which is is different in our approach, more focused on what can we do for the people of Swansea and Swansea Bay and how do we do that in partnership with others. Thank you, Keith, and that's really helpful. Um, I don't know if anybody's got any comments or observations, but I'm sure everybody will agree that we really welcome the strategy uh, and also very much the part about partnership working, um, re very relevant today for this meeting. Um, and I can also see that Helen has shared in the chat that NRW's corporate plan has been approved. Uh, let me just check that chat, uh, which links have been posted in there for the benefit of partners. To have a look at more closely. So thank you for thank that. You, Helen. Sorry, I didn't. I didn't mean to post it quite then, as as Keith was speaking. I uh, I slipped. But uh, yeah, our, our vision is for, as I mentioned earlier, people thriving, people and nature thriving together. And we've got our three uh, well-being objectives, which uh, are nature's recovery, resilience to climate change, and minimising pollution. And within the corporate plan, it references working collaboratively uh, through and with PSB. So again, that sets the uh, the tone for the the five years ahead of us in in Swansea as well, and the the work that we've got to do together. Thanks. Thank you. That's great. And um, and I'm sure um, Keith, if you want to share the links to the strategy with the PSP partners, please feel free to do so. Um, OK, so uh, I'll open it out to anyone else for anything further on this item. I can't see anyone indicating. So that will take us then um, to the reports for information, which are the future programme and the future meeting dates. Anyone with any comments on these? These are just for information only. Um, OK, so that brings us to the conclusion of the meeting with, I think, half an hour to spare. So we have 30 minutes. Ness? Um, just to say that um, Roger is uh, representing the PSB at a meeting with the Minister in the next week or two. And so if there was anything that colleagues would like Roger to raise, if they could drop him an email um, and just uh, let him know. Great. Thank you, Ness. Um, so it just remains then for me to thank you all for your attendance today and your contributions, uh, as always, and I look forward to seeing you. I believe the next one is 13th of July, but perhaps, Ness, we have an informal one before then? Yes, there will be an informal one before then, so, so I shall... uh, Leanne will be in touch with the date. Great. So hopefully we get to meet in person uh, very soon. So uh, have a great rest of your day. Enjoy the 30 minutes that you've had back. Uh, I'm sure that will be welcomed, um, but it's uh, good to see you all. Thank you for attending. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Goodbye.